Um, you are welcome to this lecture. So, in this lecture, we want to start learning something about uh, integer powers of complex numbers. All right. In the previous lectures, we learned that if you have two complex numbers um, and you multiply them, so uh, recall that we said if I have a complex number z1, which is equal to r1 cosine of theta 1 plus i sine of theta 1, all right? And I have a second complex number z2, which is r2 into cosine of theta 2 plus i sine of theta 2, and I multiply them, what I get is this result. So you multiply the uh, modulus, r1, r2, um, the argument of the products will be the sum of this, right? Will be theta 1 plus theta 2 um, plus i, then this will give me sign of, again, the sum of the two arguments, okay? So, these are important results. Um, if it's, if it's uh, z1 over z2, of course you have r1 over r2, but in that case, the argument here is uh, the difference between the arguments. All right, so we want to use this idea to establish some very important relationships um, concerning integral powers, or right? like integer powers of a complex number. In other words, if I have a complex number given by um, z is equal to um, r into cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, if I raise this to uh, some power, z raised to the power 6, do I need to expand this using binomial expansion in order to get the results? Okay, we will show that, okay, there's an easy relationship. That if I have z raised to the power of any integer n, n could be 0, 1, negative 1, any integer, this I can write as r to the power n cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. So you don't really need to expand, all right? You just have to use this relationship, which is known as the Morris theorem. So we'll stick it later on. Um, so what we are going to do now is basically a proof of, uh, of this theorem, which is a very powerful theorem, okay? So let z equal to this. Let's a complex number z given by this. Now, check this out. You see that z squared will be equal to uh, z times z. Alright? We just said that if you are multiplying complex numbers in polar form, you add the elements. So you're going to have r times r here, right? Which is r squared. I'm going to have cosine of, I'm going to add theta plus theta. Okay? That will give you theta plus i sine of 2 theta. All right, because I'm taking this and multiplying by itself, the argument will add up, like theta one plus theta two, right? That's why I have two theta and two theta here. All right, now if I do the same thing for uh, z raised to the power three, I'm going to have z to the power three, I can write as z squared times z, right? Which is basically equal to, we know uh, z squared is r squared, cosine of two theta, plus i sine of 2 theta, if you like, uh, multiplied by z, which is r into cosine co theta plus i sine theta. Just as we added here, this becomes r squared, and r gives me r raised to the power 3. I'm going to have cosine of, I will have 2 theta plus theta, right? And then i, I have sine of, 2 theta plus theta. This, of course, is just r to the power 3. Cosine of this will give me 3 theta. That is sine of 3 theta. You see? So for r squared, I could have done the addition here too. For z squared, I get r squared cosine of 2 theta sine theta. For z to the power 3, I get r to the power 3 cos 3 theta sine of 3 theta. Okay? Of course, you can continue for z to the power 4, you can, you can do that as well. For z raised to the power 4, we are going to have, of course, it's going to be z to the power 3 multiplied by z, right? And that, that's going to be equal to, I'm going to have 
z to the power 3 half r to the power 3 here multiplied by r will give you r to the power 4 and we're going to have cosine of uh, 3 theta plus theta, right? I'm going to have 3 theta plus theta, i sine of 3 theta plus theta, okay? And of course, that gives me r to the power 4 cosine of 4 theta plus i sine of 4 theta. Therefore, z, well, z to the 4 is equal to this. So, do you see a relationship being developed here? z to the power 2, I have r to the 2, cosine of 2 theta sine 2 theta. z to the 3, r to the 3, cos 3 theta sine 3 theta. z to the 4, I have r to the 4, cos 4 theta sine 4 theta. So, of course, uh, if you assume that we're doing it for all positive integers, then of course I can see that z to the n will be r to the n, right? 4, 4, and n. Cosine of, if you like, n theta, right? 4, 4, 4, and n. i sine of n theta. In this case, we have only shown it for n being um, a positive integer. Okay, so for a positive integer, you can, you can see from this development that you're going to have this. Okay. Now, we can do that for uh, negative integers as well, right? So, let's just establish that for, um, for negative integers, and then we can generalize it to all integers. So, how do we do that? We have... We have... Um, of course, we have our z, which is given by this. Um, let me write down this. Uh, the number 1, okay, if you like z to the power 0, is of course 1, and the number 2 to 0 is 1, well, z is not 0. Um, 1, we can write as, in the term, in polar form, we can write it as the modulus is 1, and then cosine of, cos of 0 is 1, so this is like cosine of 0, right? plus i sine of 0. Sine 0 is 0, so this is 0. Cosine is of 0 is 1, and 1 is 1. So the number 1 can be written in polar form, right, as a complex number in this form. I'll show you how, why that is important. Now, we want to do this for negative integers. So now, if z is equal to negative 1, that, of course, is the same as 1 over z, right? 1 over z is the same as now 1, you can write in polar form as this, right? Like 1 into cosine of theta plus i sine 0, not theta, divided by z, our z is r into cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Alright? Good. Now, when you are dividing two complex numbers in polar form, Say the modulus will just be 1 over r, the argument will be the difference, right? So we are going to have a 0 minus theta, 0 minus theta here. So this you can rewrite as 1 over r into cosine of 0 minus theta plus i sine of 0 minus theta, right? From our previous lecture. And of course, this is just equal to 1 over r into cosine of negative theta, i sine of negative theta. We are going to leave it as this, okay? Because that will help us to see how the relationship develops. Good. Now let's do that for um, a couple more, maybe one or two more. And then you see this relationship come up. All right, now, so we did it for z to the negative one. What about z to the negative two? z to the negative two, of course, will just be one over uh, z squared, all right? Um, well, you can also do it one over z times one over z, right? And use the addition, but let's do it this way. This, of course, will be one. One is, again, one we can write as cosine of zero, plus i sine 0, right, all over z squared, right, z squared would be the square of this guy, 
Remember how we computed d squared, we have multiplied by s x, so this will add up. So you're going to have r squared, all right? r squared into brackets. We're going to have cosine of 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta, okay? So this is equal to 1 over r squared. Then, because I'm dividing this, this will be my, this minus that, right? So I'm going to have cosine of 0 minus 2 theta, so that is negative I am going to have sign of negative 2. Alright? So z to the negative um, negative 2 is given by this. Alright? Go that you can write it as r to the negative 2 as well. Okay? R to the negative 2. That's r to the negative 2. Okay, good. So, so again, you can see how this is developing. Z to the negative 1. Um, I have R to the end right here. I have R to the negative 1, cosine of negative theta, negative theta. Z to the negative 2, R to the negative 2, negative 2 theta, negative 2 theta, right? So, of course, you can guess. Z to the negative 3, what do you think that is going to be? That will be R to the negative 3, cosine of negative 3 theta. I sign of negative Right? You can try to establish this. This is what we have we have done already. And so for um for negative integers, I can show that z, I can also show z to the negative n to the n is equal to r to the n cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. Note that n is negative here. So we've done it for negative and it belongs to z minus. Okay? So we've done it for you know positive integers, for negative integers, for uh, what is it for zero, right? You can show that for zero it also works. Therefore, generally, we have a relationship which says that if I have a complex number given by this. If I square this to, if I raise this to the power of any integer, right? Positive or negative integer, I'm going to have this relationship. Z to the n is equal to r to the n cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay? So that is a, that is a relationship we just established, of course, and an integer. Okay, so this is a powerful, um, powerful result, and then we'll be, we'll be using it to do uh, some examples. We'll use, we'll use it to, uh, to prove some three theorems, three identities. Um, we'll use it to do very interesting things. Okay, so this actually is, as I said, a theorem known as uh, the Morris theorem. So we have we have a theorem called um, the Morris theorem. Okay, which is that maybe if you have Z being uh, a complex number cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, then z raised to the power n is equal to r to the power n, okay? Cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. All right? So this is called the Morris theorem. Of course, in this case, we have proved it for n being uh, an integer. Okay? In a third part, uh, the theorem also holds for uh, rational numbers. Okay? Notice that theorem is also true for n for n. Like you, as I said, of rational numbers. Okay? So for z to 
the power 1 over 2, z to the power 1 over 3, z to the power 2 over 3, you can still apply this relationship. Okay? So uh, in, the next, in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll do a few examples of this just to illustrate how you apply how you apply this. I will go on to more applications of it. Okay? So uh, I will see you in the next lecture. Okay.